for me, as we wrap up the presentations today and our conversations really have highlighted the similarities in the playbook across these industries that market what one author that I, I read his book about um, really market legal, legal but lethal products to us. And what's interesting, uh, what I found interesting as I reflected on all of the presentations from today is that these industries clearly view us as young persons as being very powerful. They recognize that we have influence over our families' purchasing decisions, over our peers in schools, in communities, and around the world. And as a result, we are then surrounded by a sea of red flags. Like as we, as we began today, a sea of red flags everywhere. And so for me, coming from a small Caribbean island surrounded by water, I understand the red flag danger. Don't swim, don't go near. But we need to raise the alarm about marketing red flags um, because too much is at stake. Our children are definitely in dangerous cross currents and upstream prevention measures like marketing restrictions and bans are not only necessary, but they represent overdue legal obligations from our governments. So with that said, I'm gonna hand over to the organizers of this wonderful workshop to have the closing words. Thank you very much for having me. I can't believe that we have come to the very end of this event. Before I give my remarks, I'm gonna turn it over to Radhika. Great, um, so thank you. Thank you so much. There are uh, so many people I want to thank, but I think for most importantly, uh, and. Uh, you know, this is a journey um, which started several years back, but th there was a milestone last year in April when we all came together uh, to organize the Global Youth uh, Meet on Health. And I'm so grateful uh, to all our partners, the Healthy Caribbean Coalition, um, ACT Health Promotion Brazil, um, you know, the team at uh, HCC, Daniel, uh, Maisha, uh, Aditya Indla, uh, Laura at the ACT Health Promotion Brazil. Uh, I see our partners also from Movendi International and the World Obesity Federation here and several other partners. Thank you so very much. Um, this is really so heartening, uh, you know, for us when we envisioned the whole um, concept of the Global Youth Meet. It was really to have this ripple effect uh, something like a workshop like this, just that there were very many more people and there were, uh, you know, different rooms. But then thereafter, uh, in your own regions, as you have gone back and really put those discussions into action. So for us, um, as an organization, it is so very heartening. And thank you so much um, to uh, all of you. I really feel uh, this, and I say this on behalf of my entire team, that the youth in the AMRO region who participated in the Global Youth Meet are an example for the other regions as well. So I'm so grateful and so happy and uh, really would like uh, everybody to keep the momentum going. Um, particularly, um, uh, you know, I congratulate you for choosing a topic such as commercial determinants, because honestly, um, as far as NCD prevention and control uh, is concerned, um, you know, addressing the commercial determinants really is at the core. If we are able to address uh, the issue of commercial uh, determinants from a youth perspective, I feel that uh, the battle is half won, but there's a lot uh, to be done. Um, some reflections in terms of the tobacco and alcohol uh, industry, uh, you know, you, you've discussed uh, uh, you know, the uh, marketing strategies of these two uh, industries. And next week, you're going to discuss about food. What we see uh, in our region, in the Southeast Asia region, and I'm sure it's no different other, uh, other places as well, is how the tobacco and alcohol industries have diversified into the food sector. Uh, and so there are so many interlinkages. So these are not, you know, a few years back, uh, for example, when we were youth advocates, I mean, when people my age were youth advocates, I'm talking 10, 15 years back, um, it was simpler, honestly. Uh, we were still the targets, but it was still simpler because I would say that about 15 to 20 years back, there was some delineation as to, you know, tobacco industry, alcohol industry, uh, food and beverage and others. But over the last, uh, you know, uh, couple of decades, uh, 
especially uh, supported by social media those distinctions have really uh, you know the the, those lines are not as rigid as they used to be earlier so for example in in india we have uh, you know uh, brands uh, tobacco brands who are now uh, into food and beverage as well they are into cosmetics they are uh, into stationery products so they don't use the brand of um, their uh, the cigarette name but the company is the same right so um uh, as you uh, probably next week when you're discussing maybe you will also see some examples where the tobacco and alcohol industry tries to diversify into the food industry which is still you know more socially acceptable in the traditional uh, sense of uh, the word so um you know just something that i'd like to flag uh what i also wanted to share um uh, with you and i'm just going to share my screen very briefly just for a couple of seconds uh if you can see this website um uh, i honestly uh, came to know about this website just today in uh, one of the whatsapp groups of our tobacco control community in india uh, it's called uh, pancorner.com now pan um is a hindi word it's basically um a fresh betel leaf in a fresh betel leaf the leaves that you can see are, are at the Uh, on the screen here you know you wrap up a lot of condiments and additives and eat it fresh and a lot many times it also contains uh, raw tobacco now why the reason i'm showing this website to you is uh, if you can see uh, the tagline on the top which says we are currently only shipping to the united states uh, and for further inquiries contact this and if you see on your screen um it's very interesting it says um, you know by clicking enter you verify that you are 18 years of age or older 21 years of age or older in california and hawaii and all customers are required by law to be verified so for example if i um, you know try and enter the site uh, these are all products uh, these are mostly smokeless tobacco products they've mixed it with a lot of other things um, so these are if you see these are mostly smokeless tobacco products which uh, are very prevalent in india and this part of the subcontinent but now you know they're marketing these to right now to the us but they do claim that you know later uh, after a couple of months they will start marketing to other countries as well and so you see all these costs in usd so you know watch out for things like this unfortunately this is something which is uh, uh you know sourced from india uh, i have an apologies for that but i think uh, you know these are things that you know uh, as youth advocates uh, we need to uh, watch out for and what's interesting is if you see here um you know they they're selling things like incense sticks as well um they're selling things like, you know they've shown a picture of he uh, henna they've shown some mouth fresheners um so i mean just that these are the kind of misleading strategies where advertising is now um even being promoted uh, from one continent to another so essentially just um, keep your eyes and ears open and um, yeah this was not a part of the plan but i just came to know about this literally about an hour back so i thought i'm going to share this with you so um, once again from our side uh thank you so much very very proud of all of you and keep the good work going and let's stay connected thank you so much thank you Monica. just to echo your comments um it was awesome this event was awesome and so i'm hoping and i'm just going to ask our audience members to raise their hand if they've learned something to raise their hand if they are feeling inspired to advocate i'm seeing hands fantastic i'm seeing thumbs i'm seeing hearts that's what we really wanted so if we were really able to do that today i think we have succeeded with our goal so on behalf of the healthy caribbean healthy caribbean coalition um rede act the other partners who were involved again just to echo radika's comments thank you so much for being here as attendees a huge thank you to our moderator our chair Ms Kimberly all of the moderators excellent presentations and so again we realized that this is a global issue and so it was really awesome to see everybody kind of come together this whole essence of cross sharing and hopefully we can continue to collaborate um in the future because it's
clear that there's one playbook that no matter where the industry actors are around the world are playing from. So the conversation doesn't end today. Um, we are going to continue, as Ronica said, on day two next week for a conversation about food and Bev. And today I would describe the day as a day of learning. It was a lot of presentation, a lot of learning. Next week, we are going to do some learning, but there's also going to be a lot of opportunity for discussion. And we're going to be crafting a call to action because I think it's very clear today that where we saw where policy was enacted, there was progress. So we're hoping to craft together this call to action. So on that note, expect an email from us with a draft call to action just to kind of get some ideas going. And we hope to discuss that next week. I won't keep you any longer, but again, to thank all the partners for coming together, to thank the logistics team for helping to put this together, Jenea. I know she had to hop off, but we're so grateful for all the work that goes on at the back end. So thank you all. Have a wonderful weekend, and we're looking forward to day two. Take care.